Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the show. Since the last episode, I have, well, I've been doing some rearranging and moving things around, but I've also built a few new machines. So I want to talk about that real quick. I have here a basic chemical reactor, and I have put that next to the basic assembling machine. And the reason that I made this basic chemical reactor has to do with making the uh, where is it here these copper cables so what I've had to do up to this point was smelt a copper wire with two rubber bars in order to get a copper cable now the way I was getting the rubber bars was by smelting together one sulfur dust and three raw rubber dust for one rubber bar so two sulfur dust six raw rubber dust in order to get one copper cable and if you remember, those circuits require six copper cables. So that's pretty pricey. But it turns out that with the basic, uh, basic, <laughs> the basic chemical reactor, I can, let me find the recipe here. That's because I'm looking at the wrong spot. Okay. Basically with the basic chemical reactor, I can put in nine raw rubber dust and one sulfur dust and I get molten rubber 1,296 liters I guess it is millibuckets of molten rubber now 144 uh, liters or millibuckets of molten rubber is the equivalent of one ingot of uh, one rubber ingot and so 12 1,296 is nine rubber uh, rubber so Basically, where I was doing two sulfur and six of the raw rubber dust to get two ingots of rubber, this would this with one sulfur and nine gives me nine uh, ingots of rubber. So that ought, right off the bat is a huge savings. But once I have this molten rubber, I can then feed it directly into an assembler and with the right chip and the right recipe and everything, basically, uh, if I have one wire and 144 of the rubber or the equivalent of one ingot, then I end up having one cable out of it. So instead of using two of them to wrap around one cable or one wire in the uh, alloy smelter, it's the equivalent of one with one to get one. <laughs> that makes sense, right? <laughs> the equivalent of one r r rubber ingot with one wire gives me one cable. So the basic chemical reactor allows me to make the rubber more efficiently, and but because it makes it into molten rubber, I then feed that directly into the assembler, and that allows me to wrap it around the wires more efficiently as well. And one of the ways I discovered this was just by looking at the recipe for the copper cable here shows you that one copper wire two rubber bars for one copper cable but then here it is in the assembler one copper wire with 144 of the rubber with the integrated circuit and that gives you one copper cable so that's actually um, how i discovered it and then of course my uh, one of my viewers my friend Ing ungod also told me about it it's a great idea to do so that's what I've done up here. Here's the basic chemical reactor. I put the uh, sulfur and raw rubber dust in there and it creates the molten rubber. Now, in this corner of these machines, you have a auto output for fluids and an auto output for items. And all you need to do is take a wrench and if you select what side you want, you'll get this little hole and that's where the items or fluid will come out of. And I have it set to go here so basically as I process these the fluid will auto output into this assembler and then I can put in the wires and it will automatically wrap them up and give me the copper cables so that is a really great thing saves a lot of uh, sulfur and raw rubber dust and all that okay the next thing that I've made is this basic centrifuge and right now I've been using this basic centrifuge in order to get rock salt and sodium chloride, tiny piles of salt. If I take this impure pile of rock salt and put that in there, it starts processing and then it gives me those two items, which for now, 
I think I'm just putting in here. Actually, this rock salt I'm putting over here. So just put that away. Now, the reason that I've done this is that I want to work towards making batteries. Um, before I talk about that, though, I guess I should say, if I've done anything else, I made a few more of these high-pressure coal boilers, and I've been using them uh, to help me make uh, steam. They, These four work actually better than these six, but I have them all uh, hooked together. It's pretty nice. Uh, the other thing, thanks to a lot of comments from almost all of you, was I have made a drain, and I'm using that as the way to supply water to my machinery. So I have this drain here, which I was able to make in the assembler. There's the recipe. I didn't use aluminium. I used regular iron plates and iron bars. All right, so let me put this back on. I've got just some large wooden pipes that take the water and feed through to all of the coal boilers and then the steam comes out the back and I've got it wrapping around and then you can kind of see the pipes through there back there behind the item or behind the hopper and so that is where the steam gets used I'll put more machinery as I go along okay so let's go back to talking about batteries and I've been having some difficulty with this so I could really use uh, any advice that you guys might have for this. So as I understand it, there are single use batteries and there are reusable batteries. Now, I personally don't see the point necessarily of the single use batteries. Uh, much, like, uh, much like they sound, you uh, can make them and um, uh, charge them up with power and then use that power. But then once you're done using the power, you no longer can use the battery. Um, the reusable batteries are like they sound, where you can constantly fill them and use them and fill them and use them, which seems to me to be a lot more useful. Um, so I'm not sure why you would make single-use batteries anyway. Um, I don't really necessarily see that they're easier to make. Uh, so these, for example, these mercury batteries, you have to get mercury, which you get from a centrifuge, uh, centrifuging some cinnabar dust or some redstone. Uh, and this, uh, the acid batteries you get from sulfuric acid, which you get from electrolyzing, well, I don't know what that is, <laughs> nickel sulfate solution. Uh, hydrogen sulfide cell. Anyway, seems a really fairly complicated. Okay, so once you get to the reusable batteries, you have uh, the lowest one, the smallest one, which is sodium, the medium one, which is cadmium, and then the highest one, which is lithium. And you can see that uh, the sodium only stores 50,000, the cadmium 75,000, and the lithium 100,000. Okay. Now, there's small batteries, medium batteries, and large batteries. The small batteries are the equivalent of low voltage power. Uh, medium batteries are for medium voltage power, and the large batteries are for high voltage power. So I'm only dealing right now with these small batteries. Now, the battery itself is made from a small battery hull which is just uh, some type of cable and then these battery alloy plates, which are just a mixture of lead and antimony, uh, just some basic ores. That's not uh, too difficult to deal with. But then you get to wanting to fill the battery with um, some type of material, whether it be the cadmium, the lithium, or the sodium. And here's where I'm having the difficulty in that it seems like with the PFAA mod anyway, uh, getting any of these items, sodium, lithium, and cadmium, is difficult at best. <laughs> so let's start with the lithium batteries, which of course require lithium. Now it appears that the only way to get lithium is from the ore bribe product list. Lithium ores, which uh, PFAA does not generate as far as I can tell. Uh, spodamine ore, 
which it does, tungstate, and lepidolite. Uh, I haven't seen any lithium ores in PFAA, only these last three. Now, even that, with that saying that, let's see, um, there are some electrolyzer recipes that give you uh, some amount of uh, lithium, okay? If you look here under the usage, this particular recipe requires 120 EU per tick, which is the equivalent of medium voltage, which I'm not capable of producing right now. I can only produce low voltage. So this recipe is not usable, nor are any of the recipes in the electrolyzer to get lithium. So anything in that is out. Centrifuging, I can centrifuge this uh, lepidolite dust, and I get a tiny pile of lithium. Uh, I can uh, centrifuge spodamine and get a tiny pile of lithium. And, and then, of course, there is no actual lithium dust. So these two recipes with, for both the spodamine and the lipidolite give me a tiny pile of lithium. And remember, uh, a tiny pile is one-ninth. I would need... Uh, uh, so the in order to make the battery, I need two full lithium dusts. So that would mean I would have to uh, run that... Um, electrolyte uh, the centrifuging recipe uh, 18 times I would have to do this 18 times with either lipidolite or spodamine in order to get enough to make one battery uh, let's look at now cadmium which is this one here which again requires two cadmium dust and again when I look at the centrifuging recipes I can get it from sphalerite uh, cadmium dust which I haven't found any cadmium Rare, uh, rare Earth gives me a small chance, a 25% chance of getting some cadmium. And again, cadmium dust. So um, I have found sphalerite. Um, there are some sphalerite ores that I have there, but as you can see, I haven't found that much of it. Um, I have not found anything called cadmium ore. I don't think that that exists in the PFAA mod. And so going back to the cadmium, uh, let's see, other than centrifuging it from those things, that's pretty much the only way to get it. So that kind of sucks um, because I would only be able to get it from the sphalerite. And again, I'd only be getting a tiny pile each time. So same type of a principle. I'd have to process nine of these ores just to get one battery. Uh, that doesn't seem uh, too great. And then finally we have sodium. And so that's from sodium dust. And same type of issue now here on the electrolyzer. Again, if we look at the recipes, the only one that I can process is this very, well, not that, not this one. The second to last one here, which is two salt in the electrolyzer will give me some sodium dust and some chlorine. Okay. But this salt comes from centrifuging rock salt or well that's about it rock salt 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 and salt um as far as i know that's the only way to get it okay so then i can centrifuge it out of glauconite the sodium again i can centrifuge out of glauconite sand um but i have not been able to find any glauconite from what i can tell it supposedly spawns at the bottom of oceans, but I went looking through some oceans and I couldn't find any uh, glauconite. I found oceans, <laughs> but I couldn't find any of the glauconite. So um, the bottom line is that all of the recipes that I can find to produce any of those three, min three items, lithium, cadmium, sodium, only give me one ninth of a piece at a time. And, and so that means I have to go through 18 recipes 18 processing steps in order just to get uh, one of them, which seems kind of crazy. Um, that being said, this is all rock salt here that I found at deserts. It's fairly prominent and easy to find and fairly easy to dig up. And so I have been putting the rock salt through this process here where it goes through the macerator and then through the steam forge hammer and I will end up with an impure pile of rock salt. And then if I take that and put it into the centrifuge, I end up with rock salt and this tiny pile of salt. 
And of course I can combine the tiny piles of salt in order to give me just a regular pile. There you go, regular pile of salt. But then this has to go through an electrolyzer in order to be processed. <sighs> it seems like a lot of work in order to get a very simple battery. And that's where I want your guys' help. Um, am I doing this completely wrong? Am I missing something that I'm not seeing on how to make these reusable batteries? Um, if it's easier to make the single-use batteries, um, that's okay, and you can tell me that. But again, I feel like the reusable batteries are just more useful. And even though it is a longer process, I'd probably rather make a reusable one than a non-reusable one. So anyway, that's where I'm at right now. Um, the thing that I need to make right now is uh, an electrolyzer. I have the centrifuge and I need a basic electrolyzer. So I'm going to work on that now. I've already made all, I think, all of the pieces I need for it. So if I look at the basic electrolyzer, uh, the low voltage machine hull, a piece of glass, two circuits, one tin cable, and four gold wires. I thought this was interesting. It's the first time I've had to use uh, gold for wires. But um, again, I think I have all of this. Oh no, I still need to make... What do I need to make? I need to finish making the LV machine hull. So we'll do this with the tin cables real quick like that. There we go. And so now I should have everything. There we go. Basic electrolyzer. All right. So what I want to do now is hook this up to power. And I think I can do this. Oh, I can't do this this way. Um, I think that I will do this this way. So it's probably not the most efficient use of... Oh, I have a steam turbine already in my inventory. Of steam turbines. But I'm going to plug that in there. And make sure it's getting steam, which it is. And then I'll put that like so. Okay, so here's the basic electrolyzer. And so again, I should be able to take this salt. Uh, here we go, salt. And put this over here. And it should be fairly quick, but it should again, electrolyze out and give me sodium. I've got uh, 14 sodium dust now. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna work on making is the battery alloy. And as I said, that is a combination of lead and antimony. And I've got some small piles of antimony. I'm not 100% sure where I got those from, but that's seven pieces there. And that should be another three pieces, which is 10. So let me put these together real quick. All right, so I've got 10. And one of the nice things about battery alloy is if you look at it, it tells you it's uh, PB4SB. And that means that you, it requires four lead and one antimony. And that will actually make five ingots in the alloy smelter. So if we look at the alloy smelter recipe like that, see, four lead and one antim antimony will equal five battery alloy ingots so let's go back here and let's see one two three four one two three f oops <laughs> four let's go ahead and start by trying to make two now i don't think i have to turn these into ingots first i think i can use the antimony dust the way it is yeah so that will process into battery alloy plate um, before we can make the battery though, oops, battery, we need to have a canning machine, I believe. Yes, a canning machine. So let's look at the recipe for a basic canning machine. I think that's right. Is that right? Basic canning machine? Seems like it should be right. Okay, pumps, another machine hull, some more circuits, tin cables, etc., etc. Uh, so let me let me work on that. I'll be back. Okay, basic canning machine. Take that. Great. All right. So we need to put this into some power as well. 
and I think what I might do is yeah I think I'll use it with that power I don't think I'm gonna use all of these machines at the same time okay so this is the basic canning machine great now let's look at making some batteries so the first thing we need to make is okay the small battery hull and that's a tin cable with some battery alloy plate and again just two of those and a tin cable on top and that gives me the small battery hull good now in order to make it into a battery we put it in the canning machine with two of the sodium which I put oh I think I left it in ah, I left it in here okay so one and two and that will go through and that's pretty quick which is nice and boom I've got a small sodium battery and it is again rechargeable so for example what I could do there's a, a little lightning bolt slot in almost all of the machinery and if I put that in there you will see it's now filling up with power and there we go the battery is full if for some reason that turbine should run out of steam and stop producing power then the centrifuge would still run off of the existing battery that I have so that's also very nice okay so now that I can make batteries the next thing that I want to make is a battery buffer and the battery buffers come in all these different flavors here but they're actually pretty simple they're all kind of the same in a certain sense um, the first thing that happens is it's based upon the tier of power so everything from ultra low up to max <laughs> voltage battery buffer and then the next thing that happens is the number of slots so all of these have one slot then there are four slot and then there are nine slot and then there are 16 slot batteries and uh, that's pretty much it um, the slots is the number of batteries that go into that battery buffer and then of course the voltage is uh, the voltage that the battery buffer can handle uh, so you're going to make them according to whatever current volt thing you're at obviously right now what i'm at is low voltage and what i want to make first is the low voltage battery buffer with four slots and so a chest with a low voltage machine hull and some 4x10 wires Ought to do the trick. There you go. Low voltage battery buffer with four slots. You can see the voltage going in is 32 and the voltage coming out is 32. And there you go. Got an achievement for that too. Great. Okay, so if I put this down, you can see that there is a, again, there's a slot for each battery and you put in, you know, however many batteries to it. And I believe that this is a... I think that all of the blank sides are input and this facing outward here or this little dot is the output so let's take these out and I kind of show how this works basically it stores up power into those four uh, batteries so let me see I have uh, yeah I've got some tin cable here and so yeah, there is a um, steam turbine, a basic steam turbine right there. And I'm going to put this battery buffer like that. And if I put these four batteries in here, they will start to fill up with power coming from that um, basic steam turbine. Now, you will have noticed a pause before they started filling up, and that is because the battery buffer itself has an internal bit of storage, I believe, or something. So that fills up first, and then the batteries start to fill up. Now, the reason that you would want to use a battery buffer is, again, you can have the power come directly out of this and into your machines, rather than having the power go directly from the machine you know from the turbine directly into the centrifuge I could have the power going from the turbine into 
the battery buffers and then from the battery buffers into the centrifuge. And that is nice because it allows you to store up uh, power that you can use at a later point. And so that of course is something that's very, very useful. That is going to do it for this episode. If you have any questions or comments, if you have any hints, tips, tricks, if you have any criticisms, uh, please leave them for me in the comment section below. Don't be afraid to leave a note and say hi. It lets me know that you <laughs> managed to make it through the entire video despite whatever boring bits might be in there. And again, uh, for those of you in the know, if I'm doing something wrong with the batteries, please let me know because uh, it seems like it should, it's a lot harder than it should be. As always, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you next time.